the mound of Jericho, the ruins of ancient Jericho, and uh, it's uh, looking south, and you see some holes and some trenches there. Those are all from the work of Kathleen Kenyon in the 1950s. You don't see much of uh, earlier excavations, and in fact, there have been some later excavations since that photo was taken. <clears throat> well, it turns out that uh, a building was excavated at Jericho in the 1930s, which appears to be the actual residency of Eglon, king of Moab. And here we have it on the screen. It was excavated by John Garstang in the 1930s. And uh, you see some uh, structures uh, a bit to the north here, uh, up in this area. And they uh, were excavated in the 1950s by Kathleen Kenyon. And in particular, we're going to look at this uh, feature here in a moment, and Gary will be very interested in this because it's a dung oven. <laughs> what Gary was talking about earlier. Uh, the uh, phase here at, at uh, Jericho uh, has been dated by Garstang, by Kenyon, even by other scholars, and I have looked at the pottery from this particular period. Everybody agrees that this material dates to around the middle of the 14th century BC. And if you remember the date I put up uh, earlier, that was uh, around uh, this time frame, 1356, 1339. That's the time when Eglon uh, had his residency there and was collecting tribute from the Israelites. And so it's in the right place and it's the right date. Every time uh, we make one of these correlations between an archaeological find and what the Bible says, the critics and a lot of the Bible scholars, oh, you can't do that. You can't make these connections. How do you know that's Eglon's palace? Well, I can't be 100% sure, but it fits all of the evidence. I mean, why shouldn't it be Eglon's palace? We don't have an inscription found there that says, oh, Eglon lived here. Eglon collected tribute from the Israel. We don't have that sort of information. What we have is a structure at Jericho in the mid 14th century BC. And the interesting thing about this structure is there was, it appears to be like a, a palace uh, of a ruler. Some important person lived here, but yet there was no town there to rule over. The whole place was in ruins except this uh, structure and a couple of outbuildings built just above the spring there at Jericho. I mean, it fits the, uh, the biblical account perfectly. And here's that picture or that uh, structure uh, excavated by Garstang in the 1930s. Now, here's a photo of Kenyon's excavation just a bit to the north where she found a few remnants of walls uh, that you can see very clearly in the picture here. And the dung oven. And if you'll notice, right in front of the dung oven is a little juggler. And this is interesting because Kenyon said that this was the only material that she had found at Jericho that could be related to the conquest in the story we have in Joshua chapter 6 about the Israelites conquering Jericho. Well, she was all messed up on her chronology, and uh, she believed that the conquest didn't happen around 1400, happened much later in the 1200s, and she said, well, maybe this had something to do with the conquest, but in fact, it has nothing to do with the conquest, and has everything to do with Judges chapter 3 and the story of Eglon. Well, here's this famous uh, juglet that was found next to the dung oven and uh, she said well this is this is all I found that could be related to Joshua chapter 6 well she was wrong there's a lot that can be related to it once you get the chronology straightened out well here's some interesting pottery uh, uh, we and ABR love pottery because it's uh, what we dig up when we go to Israel and excavate there and it's what we use for dating and we can uh, learn a lot from pottery. This particular pottery was found in that uh, structure there at Jericho, and it's all 
imported pottery. It's from Cyprus, Cypriot imported ware it's referred to. And this is indicative of somebody who has means, who has wealth, because uh, it's, a, it's a very finely made and finely decorated pottery and only the rich could afford it. Well, the person who lived in this house evidently was quite well to do because he had all this uh, lovely imported pottery from Cyprus. Well, there's uh, ordinary pottery there as well, but uh, this is uh, particularly important. We find that sort of pottery mainly in tombs and burials where they would place their most uh, valuable uh, pottery uh, with the dead, but in this case it's in this building and indicates a wealthy owner. Not only do we have that pottery indicating a wealthy owner and an important owner, but we have this little clay tablet and you can see uh, some cuneiform signs there on the tablet. Unfortunately, it was so uh, badly damaged and su in such poor condition that it can't be read, but we know it's cuneiform. We can date it approximately to this uh, time period of Eglon. But the important thing is that it indicates whoever lived in the house was uh, someone who was keeping track of something or other keeping written records. We very rarely find any sort of written document in uh, ancient uh, Israel, uh, particularly from this time of the late Bronze Age. Uh, but here's uh, one of those uh, exceptions to that found here in connection with this uh, structure at Jericho, indicating again somebody of means, somebody of wealth, somebody who had their own scribe to write down some sort of a record or message or we don't know exactly what, but it's significant. 